some of you will have to forgive me for beginning in this way after I simply remind you of the invitation that Francis read out for you from the book of Proverbs. Come, eat of my bread and of the wine I have mixed. I grew up in the United States, and if you grew up in the United States, you know that from about the late 1950s or so, the different denominations of Christian churches in America found a new and peculiar way of competing among themselves. They created distinctive roadside signs that were usually posted out at the city limits, pointing you in the direction of their local church. The Methodists had one, and the Lutherans had one, and the Presbyterians had one, and the Congregationalists had one. Even the Unitarians had one. And we, of course, the Episcopal Church, had one too. That sign became a very familiar landmark to any of us who spent time traveling around the United States, and it always said the same thing. Do you know what it said? The Episcopal Church welcomes you. We have one right here at St. Paul's. It's right out on the street by the gate of the Via Nazionale. It made me smile when I saw it because it reminded me of growing up where I did. There is something about that sign that is quintessentially Anglican. It is very polite and it is very passive. We are here, our door is open, we welcome you, but it is up to you to find your way to us and to decide whether or not you want to come inside. We certainly would not want you to feel pressured. About 20 years ago or so, some of my colleagues in the Diocese of Massachusetts, where I was raised up in ministry, decided that our sign was too passive. They thought we ought to be more energetic in telling people that we really meant it when we said we wanted them to come and be with us. And so they started a new campaign that changed the old phrase by one word. Can you guess what it said? The Episcopal Church invites you. They had bumper stickers printed up and hats and t-shirts and all of the goofy things that you would expect to go with a new sort of enthusiastic campaign. It was a small change, but a very different state of mind. If I tell you that you are welcome in my house, you have to decide for yourself whether to open the door and come in. But if I invite you to my house, as some of you have invited Judy and me to your houses while we've been here, we've sent you a very different message. We are not indifferent on the question of whether or not you come. We've taken the risk of sharing our hope with you that you will come inside and be with us. Well, there are two invitations set before you today. They are not passive messages. They are messages sent to you with the expectation that you will respond. The first invitation has been sent by Sophia from God's wisdom. Sophia has invited us to join her for a meal. Her invitation tells us about all the trouble she has gone to to prepare for us. The best food has been prepared. The best wine has been made ready. The table has been set. All that is missing is you. Will you come? Of course, there's something more that you receive for accepting this invitation. You don't just get food. You get more of the host. Wisdom is inviting you to take some of wisdom, to benefit from the deeper, the wider, the limitless knowledge of God. But to partake of that, well, that may be an acquired taste. Not everyone who is invited to Wisdom's Feast wants to come. Many of those RSVPs go unanswered. 
The second invitation you've received today is from Jesus. It is also an invitation to a meal. And the invitation also tells you what was involved for Jesus in preparing that meal. But it's a very different kind of meal. It is not the invitation from Sophia, from God's wisdom, inviting us to come and learn. It is an invitation from the very self of God, the very heart of God, to come and partake in a bread that is the very flesh of God. This invitation is meant to help bring us to a realization that Jesus of Nazareth is God in the flesh, God living and true and dwelling among us as one of us. And it is meant to bring us to see how God's life in Christ, how God's death in Jesus, how God's victory over death in the resurrection means something more for us than loaves and fishes, more than simple physical life. In just the way that wisdom invited us to come partake in wisdom, Jesus is inviting us to come partake in himself. Jesus has prepared himself as the meal that he offers us, the bread of life that is his earthly body, because the bread of that body surpasses life and conquers death. The meal we're invited to by Jesus is the meal in which we receive by faith the sustenance not of earthly life, but of eternal life. And just like you, when you invite someone to your house, Jesus sets this invitation before you, hoping, hoping that you will respond. Respond with your whole self. Respond with your hunger for justice, with your longing for God. And Jesus hopes that once we have been fed and sustained, once we have responded, to his invitation and been nourished by that bread, we'll share that invitation with anyone else who is starving for hope, starving for life, starving for the sacred in this world. That we'll not just open our door and tell people that the Episcopal Church welcomes them, but we will invite them, invite them to come Invite them to see, invite them to receive, and be with us. Amen.